Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we, I'm going to tell you about Podnet, pod networking. So before jumping directly into pod networking, let's talk about how networking used to happen in Docker. So suppose you have your host over here, which has an interface, say ETH zero. And when you run a Docker daemon, so Docker daemon on this host, it creates a network called Docker zero, right? I hope you guys know that and this gets an IP address let's say it gets 172.18.0.1 this is the IP address of this docker zero uh, virtual interface so this is virtual interface and whenever you create a container so suppose I create a container what docker does is it creates a virtual linked uh, pair of virtual ethernet so it creates a linked pair of virtual ethernet and attaches one end of that pair to the network namespace of the container and the other end to this docker zero virtual interface right so now this container it gets another virtual interface say called okay i'm running out of space so let me clean this and say it gets v eth 0 right and it gets another ip which is from the same range so let's say it gets dot 2 right now if i create another container the same thing happens another container and this gets a virtual interface called v eth 1 right so this is all good at the container level, right? But uh, I mean, I have actually told you that when you run a pod, uh, all the containers running inside a pod actually share the uh, network namespace, right? So they can uh, access each other or they can address to each other on localhost. So how does that happen? So let me just get rid of this. Let's quickly get rid of this. All right. So now uh, let's again create our host. I'll create a bigger one. So we have space and this again is ETH zero and we have Docker zero, right? So now in Kubernetes, I mean, what Kubernetes actually follows is that Whenever you create multiple containers, they share the same namespace, right? So something of this sort should be happening. So we have a container, we have our second container, let's say C1 and C2. And this is our virtual interface. We say we ETH zero, right? And this will get an IP address from the same range as Docker zero. And then they can talk, they basically, they see each other as local host, but sorry. How is this V ETH zero being done, right? So, so Kubernetes actually implements this uh, shared network namespace by running another container, which is called pause. So if you go into your uh, Kubernetes host and do a Docker PS, you would see one or more the pause container running, right? So pause container, it, I mean, it functionally it does nothing. The only function it performs is to hold the network namespace. So we can actually do a video on pause and uh, work out through its uh, functionalities. But for now, you just understand that the main function of pod container is to hold the network namespace for all the other remaining containers. So suppose if this container goes down, another container comes up, the network namespace stays there, right? So that is why they actually share the network namespace. So this is, I mean, this is still incomplete because we, I mean, in Kubernetes, I have told you when we started this uh, course that in Kubernetes, uh, one pod can reach out to another pod on its IP address, right? 
So how does that communication happen? So let's look at, and that's, that is what actually useful. I mean, this is not useful to us. This, okay, I mean, for theory and for learning, it's good, but this is not useful to us. The useful feature of Kubernetes actually comes when we are actually able to send data from one pod to another, right? So let's see how that happens. So in this picture, I've taken a Kubernetes cluster of say two nodes and they are on some network and they can talk to each other via this router or gateway you can call it, right? And this node has an IP of 10.0.0 slash two and this one has slash three and my router has an IP of dot one, sorry, dot two, dot three and dot one, right? So now if we put whatever construct we have discussed earlier over here, so you would have something like uh, docker 0, just call it d0, say this has IP of 172.17.0.1, then we come into our virtual interface, vetch 0, and we have container 1, container 2, and our pause container, right? And this VTH is zero has, I mean, it gets an IP of the same range. So suppose it gets 172.17.0.2, right? So please, I mean, mind. Now, if we just, I mean, if we don't have any networking structure, which is, so, I mean, by default, Kubernetes actually doesn't implement any networking uh, structure, right? It actually just tells you what kind of networking it expects. And that is why you actually have to install uh, network uh, plugins uh, external. I mean, when you create a Kubernetes cluster, the network plugins are not installed. You actually have to install them outside when once you build your cluster, right? So if that structure is not there, what could happen is say, I mean, if the networking structure or networking plugins, the logic they implement is not there, you would actually run a, end up running say Docker zero this can have the same IP as this, so same IP. And when you create containers or the containers or whatever, they would actually not know what's the next hop and how they can actually go to this. I mean, suppose if I want to send some data from this container to this container, this would not actually know, right? What is the next IP that I, what is the hop actually that I need to take to reach out to this? And it could be very well that, I mean, they can have the same IP, right? So there is no mechanism to actually tell how to send one packet from this node to this node. And that is where the Docker uh, network plugin come in. So suppose uh, uh, you install Flannel, you install Weave, you install Calico. What they do exactly is, so let me show you that. All right, so you can see on my screen, I have changed the diagram. So when you run a network plugin, so what the function of that network plugin is actually to run an overlay network across all nodes, right? And it covers all the bridges which are running on each node and assigns them. So when you basically uh, run a network plugin, you give it an IP address range, right? So you have to give it an IP address range. So then what that network plugin does is it actually assigns an IP address from that particular range to each bridge running on each node. So this gets, so suppose if I give an IP address range of 10.1.0.0 slash 16. So this would maybe get say 10.1.0. Say X and this would get say Y, right? Dot Y. So, and similarly, I mean, the number of nodes you would have, they would keep getting an IP address out of this range. And in the same way, the container running would get an IP address from this range, right? So basically what we are doing is we are first submitting a bigger address range into smaller range. And then again, we are doing uh, subnetting some, something of that sort. We are just subnetting it. We are just making the network shorter. And it also basically populates the routes or the net routes, uh, network routes in our uh, router. So whatever router uh, we have, uh, the way they, the two nodes are communicating, it will populate the next hop routes in this router. So the network plugin will take care of that. 
and it will i mean i am running out of space otherwise i would have shown you the kind of routes you would have in a router which are populated by network plugin so when you deploy a network plugin or when you deploy this structure if you send a packet out of this pod to say a pod running over here they would reach out to i mean each other using their ip because i mean then you actually have the normal networking thing which you have right so when you create an ip packet you put in the source ip address you put in the destination ip address and you put in the next hop ip address right so for this pod the next hop ip address would be this this would contain the next hop ip address as this this would contain all the next hop ip i mean it will reach out to the gateway and the gateway will route it to this node and this node will go to this bridge and this bridge will transfer it to this pod so then once i mean once you implement network plugin uh, the network becomes flat so the i mean all the normal networking concepts apply now unlike when you have docker networking which which was little different right so that is why uh, there's a thing called uh, cni so we'll discuss about that also uh, container networking interface so kubernetes actually just lays down the rules and that is why you have multiple plugins in market flannel is there calico is there weavenet is there so they all i mean they provide the same functionality but they work a little different uh, in i mean every plugin works a little different so we'll probably see the working of flannel in a little detail maybe in the next video or when we'll reach out we'll reach the networking part of kubernetes probably we can see that then right yeah so this is how the networking is actually happening between the pods we'll get a better idea when we'll talk about the service networking in kubernetes so you will get a clearer idea then so probably i'll try to cover the service networking in the next video but yeah this is it for this video uh, please do subscribe to the channel before leaving i hope you like the video please i mean if you like the video please tell me in the comment if if there's something you didn't like or if you found it useful right so just tell me in the comments and yeah that's it for this video please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching